Master and ignition switches. On. Batteries and inverters. We'll start by turning on the alternate inverter and using it to test our batteries. The inverters change direct current to the alternating current the engine instruments need. Let's check our batteries using the inverter as a guide. Turn on number one battery. Inverter's humming, that means number one battery's putting out. Now turn off number one and put on number two. Number two's okay, now try number three alone. Okay, turn all three on now and check the voltmeter on the instrument panel. What does it say the inverter's putting out? 26 volts. Check, now try the inverter on normal. Voltage? 26 volts. Right in the button. We'll uh, leave the inverter on normal. You'll notice that Mullins is keeping an eye on the inverters. Moving the instrument flying curtain away from the inverter so it can get some air. And he's checking to see that there are no metal objects down there that might contact the inverter points and cause a short. Another important point. Whenever possible, we use an external source of electrical power to start the engines. To save the batteries? Right. Reach out the window and give the mechanic this. A right to the jaw? That's a hand signal to connect external power. In this case, it's that portable generator you saw out there. Parking brakes and hydraulic check. Brakes on. Pressure? About 800. Check. Booster pumps and pressure. On? Check. Carburetor air filters on to keep dust out of the engine. Fuel quantity. Tanks one, two, three, four. Right and left. All full. Okay. We're all set to go. Signal to start number one. I got the okay, but I couldn't see the guy with the fire extinguisher. He's in back of the engine. You see, it's easier for him to direct the extinguisher into the engines from there, through the open car flaps. And there's less danger of his getting excited and running through the prop in case there is a fire. Adjust your throttle so they won't creep when the engines get going. Move the throttle lock up slowly and keep testing throttle movement until there's enough friction to hold the throttles firm, but you can still move them with a fair amount of ease. You got it? Yeah. Close your throttles right down against the bottom. Now we're going to crack them so we'll get about 1,000 RPM from our engines when they start. Uh, how far will that be? Oh, have to guess, but I'd say about three quarters of an inch open. Move the inboards up past the outboards about that far. Now bring the outboards up even with the inboards. That's the easiest way to judge the distance. They'll probably need some adjustments when the tack gets going and we can tell more accurately. All right, here we go. With one hand, I hold the starter switch for 15 to 20 seconds. And with the other hand, I set the hand primer for number one engine and pump it a few times to get the air out of the primer lines. Unlock your mixture control and be ready to pull number one mixture control back as soon as the engine fires. With this newer type starter, you hold the starter switch on while you're meshing it. Okay. your oil pressure. If it doesn't rise in 30 seconds, the engine has to be shut down and the trouble investigated. All right, check your RPM. Adjust your throttle for 1,000. Number one's okay. Signal to start number two. Now 
before we start number two engine, set your vacuum selector switch there to left. We want the vacuum pump to start delivering just as soon as number two engine starts so we can see whether the pump is working okay and also to see whether the flight indicator is functioning properly. The horizon should snap into position firmly and quickly just as soon as the number two engine starts. All right, let's start her. From here on, it's just like number one. Watch your flight indicator now. Okay, check your other instruments for number two engine. Oil pressure, fuel pressure, RPM. Check. All right, three and four are just like number one. There we are. Better, huh? Check estimates now, don't we? Yeah. Fuel pressure should be between 14 and 16 pounds. The oil temperature is high enough now that we can advance the throttles to about 1,200 RPM so the engines will warm up faster. <laughs> 